making sure you have electricity when you want it has always been a balancing act. But with the growing contribution of energy from renewable resources, finding the right balance is not so easy anymore. Because unlike power from fossil fuels, wind and solar are intermittent. In addition, many of these generators are in remote places, far from the electricity grid. So now what's being proposed are electricity networks that are not only reliable but clever too. They're called smart grids. Euronews met Dr Keith Bell, an expert in smart grids in Glasgow, Scotland, where he researches and trains students in power systems engineering. So, what exactly are smart grids? Well, it de depends who you ask, actually, what sort of answer you will get. It's many things to many people. Uh, one thing you could say about the consistent answer is smart grids are the answer. The difference is what the question is. Now, for us in Europe, I think largely the question is how do we accommodate renewable electricity generation? What does that mean for uh, the operation of the grid? After all, you've got to get the power from where it's being generated to where it needs to be used. And that presents now some major challenges. How will smart grids fix that? In terms of getting the power from where it's being generated to the demand centre, one of the keys is going to be to use the existing electricity system infrastructure to the fullest extent possible. So that's the first thing. How can we get more out of the existing infrastructure? The other part about you know, just on the whole system managing the variability is you know, the traditional way of doing it has been to vary the generation output, to schedule power stations to come on and switch off at different times of the day according to a forecast of what consumers are going to want what the demand for electricity will be. What we can now think about uh, is not just varying the generation output, but can we actually modify the demand? So th does this mean that in the future that my washing machine will be in fact operated by someone in a control room who himself is prompted to do that by times of high wind, times of good solar energy? Is, is that a possibility? Indirectly, I think. I'd, I'd be very surprised if there's going to be someone sitting in the control room controlling you know, millions of individual washing machines. But indirectly, what they can be doing is sending out a signal that um, requests a reduction in total output from, it can be an individual building, mm. it might be a home, it might be an office block, uh, it might be a factory, it might be a, a group of buildings, it might be a community. Does the electricity district control that minutely? Not at the moment, and this is, the, this is really the sort of the radical change. Oh, okay. Uh, with smart grids is that degree of control on so many individual active players in this very large integrated system is not something we've ever seen before. This micromanaging, this, this managing of the very smallest through to the very biggest sounds like a nightmare. It's not the sort of thing you could possibly attempt without automation, is it? I think that's true. The automation is really key. Yeah, absolutely. Automation, getting good visibility of what's happening, good information to allow the automation to behave right. in the right way at the right time. The other thing about an electricity system is that, it, you know, in some ways, it's quite vulnerable. Apparently, quite innocent events that normally would not cause any problem at all can tip the system over very, very quickly into a very large blackout. And we've seen this, fortunately, on relatively few occasions. Uh, but it, it does happen. At the moment, 85% of our electrical power is generated by fossil fuels. There is great expectation in the community that renewables, wind, solar, tidal, geothermal, etc., will be able to actually start to replace this amount of electricity mm. to a quite a substantial extent. But will we ever be able to do without base power, without power being on all the time? I think the way look, things look at the moment, to me, is that we won't be able to do without that. Um, if we're going to have the same level of reliability of supply that we've become accustomed to. It's going to be very difficult, I think, to persuade people that um, you know, the, 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 the appliances or the services you get from electricity that they would regard as critical might be denied them much more regularly than they are now. One of the ideas, certainly, that the, the government in Britain has had is that smart meters would help people to simply use less electricity. And, of course, that's got to be part of the whole climate change and climate yeah. change management agenda. 
we should not be using as much energy as we use now. What happens if we don't install smart grids? I think what we're talking about here is um, you know, taking it as red, that we've got to meet these carbon reduction targets. There's no choice about that. We've got to make better use of, more extensive use of uh, wind energy, hydro, maybe nuclear, uh, maybe sort of renewable forms of, of heating, um, you know, photovoltaic cells, solar power, ground source, heat pumps, etc. We've got to do that. That's taken as red. To be able to do that, though, you need the whole energy network infrastructure to be able to cope with it. So really you're predicting a quite different world. If we can bring in demand side management, uh, then it's going to be very different. We'll be getting used to different ways of using our electrical appliances. If we're talking about electric vehicles as one of the main ways of reducing the carbon impact of transport, that's going to have to all be part of this uh, quite radically different electricity infrastructure. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be quite, quite different.